All right, this uh, presentation is uh, about UCDs, but UCDs uh, are uh, called use case diagrams. There are many different types of these, uh, but they're generally referred to as unified modeling language. It's a, basically a modeling language used to express design and enabling IT professionals to model computer applications, which is actually what we're doing in this uh, particular task for us. So it's needed for our software development course. So use case diagrams, their main objective is to create a model of functional requirements, and that is what the coding or the functions will be of the software, logging in, searching, and so on. So the use case diagram describes the functionality of system, repeating myself, but there it is, UCDs created during the analysis phase which is actually what you guys are using. It's, it's an analysis tool, so keep that in mind uh, for the exam. Um, and as I said, it, pro it plans the system's functional requirement. The emphasis is on what the system does rather than how, and the how is worked out later in the design phase. So for example, pseudocodes shows how the login code is going to work. They're helpful in communicating with clients in the real world. Their simplicity makes use case diagrams a good way for developers to communicate with clients. And as we've said again, is it helps developing team or developers visualize the function, uh, functional requirements of the system. So the, the components of a UCD is the boundaries of the system, which is the big, the big box. The name of the system, so please put it somewhere. You can either put it at the top or uh, inside the box. The use cases, which are verbs, place an order, fill an order, log in. These are all functional requirements. And uh, basically, the, uh, the stickmen are the actors who interacts with the system. And that could be a person or another system like a, like a, like a bank and so on. So make sure that when you, you put the name of the use case in the use case symbol, which is the ellipse. So the use case describes a sequence of actions or a functionality provided by the system to the actor. So in this case, the actor, the actors are the customer, the staff, the manager, and so on, and the credit card system. So that means that the staff are given the ability, it says here, provides them with the functionality of the system. They can log in, they can maintain customers, they can rent items, whatever. They're drawn as horizontal ellipses and the use case up make up a set of scenarios. Each scenario is a sequence of steps and functions that encompass an interaction between a user and a system. This accomplishes a specific goal of the user. So for example, the manager can override certain things, can can start up the system or shut it down and so on. So watch out. In a use case's name, don't combine an and, not and login and check order. Login is a use case, it's a certain function of code, and check order is another. This implies multiple actions, so you have to, you have to basically separate them. Actors are drawn at the edge of the system, as we talked about, the boundaries, and they appear once in the UCD. They must be connected to at least one process, otherwise what are they doing there? And the process, of course, we've talked about is called use case. Actors are roles, not people. Of course, a person can have several roles, but we'll have a look at that in a minute. The use case diagrams allows a designer to to graphically show these use cases and how they how actors interact with them. An actor is a person, could be a person, it could be an organization, it could be an external system like a credit card system in a bank. And they play one, they have one or more interactions with the system. They're drawn as stick figures and obviously they have to connect with an association with a particular task like this particular stick figure or actor enters the order. It could be a customer that enters the order. It could be uh, a clerk that works at the company. So in that sense, a user of a system may play several different roles. 
uh, through the course of his or her job. It's possible that the same person may be, may be a salesperson, but also provide support. When creating a use case model, we, we are not concerned with the individual user, only the role that they play as an actor. So for example, here, entering order is the role of the clerk. But when the CEO, the CEO, which is the, the top guy in the company, enters an order, he takes on the role of the, the clerk. Entering order is not the role normally of the CEO. It's the role of the clerk. So when Mr. Sonnaby enters the order, he's now taking on the role of the order entry clerk. So in this account system, in, is, is the account system actor a human? Account system generally implies that it's an information system. So remember, you need to be very specific how you call, uh, how you name, sorry, your actors. So an actor is associated with a particular use case, sometimes called communication. Associations are these connections between the actor and the use case. It's shown as a line, uh, sometimes with an arrow. We'll, we'll talk about that later. It connects an actor to a use case, and each actor may be associated with several use cases. In other words, your clerk can check, delete account, open account, search accounts. Your clerk can do an awful lot when they use your app. Each use case may be associated with several actors. So an association exists whenever an actor is involved in interaction described by the use case. So for example, if you look at the little ninja at the top, this basically make an appointment is the use case and the association is that the patient can make an appointment. If you look at the video rental diagram, the staff, the association here, the staff uh, can maintain customers. The arrow at the end indicates suggestion, we'll talk about that later, indicates that the staff is initiating the maintain customer database or rents the item. But the customer can also, this not particularly helpful because it, this one, don't do this. Uh, this is not a good example in that the customer interacts with the staff. Uh, it's not really necessary to have that. What we're interested in, in, the, in this particular one, is the staff, the manager, and the credit card system because they are the ones that are actually interacting with the system. Arrowed associations, important thing to make clear now, arrows do not indicate data flow. They are not the same, they don't have the same meaning as a DFD, data flow diagram. Assume communication is always two ways between the actor and the use case. So just because you've got one line, assume that it's going both ways, right? An arrow just indicates which actor initiates. So a line is one thing and a line with an arrowhead is another. So think about it. <clears throat> if you have an arrowhead, is that a particular actor is initiating the use case. We call this the primary actor. And which actor was affected by, by it, which is basically the passive actor. We'll have a look at that in a moment. With no arrow, it's unclear which actor started the use case. And that could be okay because, or they may both, can, they may both initiate uh, a particular use case. More about this later. So in this particular example is, can a patient make an appointment or can the scheduler? Well, in this case, it looks like they both can because there's, no arrow at the, for, for the patient to make an appointment or a scheduler at the end of the line, which to me is okay because it shows that a scheduler can also make an appointment for a customer if they call up, uh, to, they call up over the phone. But if the patient is using an app, they can also make an appointment using the particular software. Can the scheduler cancel an appointment? It's really hard to say. But in this particular instance, uh, it looks like they both can, both the patient and the scheduler can. That's how I read this. So we ask the question, who, in each, who initiates the bill payment in the use case? 
the patient or the clerk. The top diagram is unclear because there's really no, there's no arrows that indicate an initiation of a particular use case, right? There's no arrows in the top diagram. It's, but if we look at the, the, the diagram below, we'll see that, that in fact, the arrows are there. So the patient makes the appointment, the, the patient cancels the appointment, but the scheduler simply responds to that particular use case. Now, this can be very important. Otherwise, some use cases might never be triggered or triggered when you don't want them to occur. So when you develop your use case diagram, I don't mind if you have no arrows between the patients and the scheduler because it'll, to me, it'll indicate that both can, can actually be, or both are involved in it. We know this. But there's no one in particular, only it's not just one person who can initiate making an appointment. In this case, both the patient and the scheduler can. Okay, version two, allow us to, to make it clear. In this case, only patients make and cancel appointments in the diagram below, not the scheduler. Patients request medication, medication and doctors respond to the medication. That's what your arrows indicate. Clerks begin the bill payment use case and the patient responds. So therefore, looking at that, it's very clear what's happening. Okay, how many actors are in the UCD? Think about it. Little stick men. How many communications or what we call associations drawn as lines? How many use cases? drawn as ellipses. And can the doctor request that a patient be given medication? Well, in this particular instance, I would say that both the patient and the doctor can request medication. You could say for Koi, maybe, yes, maybe, both. Here's another example. What can we deduce from this? Well, because there's no arrows at the end of the association, which is the lines, it to me indicates that it just means that data is flowing both ways. So the band manager can see the CD sales system, <clears throat> but it doesn't indicate who initiated it. It just simply means that this actor can do this, like the band manager can do that, and the band manager can do this. In this particular example, can the scheduler make an appointment? According to this diagram, the answer is clearly no. Can a scheduler cancel an appointment? And the answer is no. The scheduler simply responds in this particular case. Uh, now the scheduler could be a, an individual, but it also could be a system. In this case, uh, the answer is no. So is that what we, do we want the system to do, allow? Okay, if it is, fine. However, you might realize that it's vital that the scheduler can cancel an appointment. In such a case, a new arrow is not added to the line from the scheduler side. The existing arrow I had attached to the top of the use case must be removed. That means that data that they, it is suggesting that both can initiate. You cannot have two or more associations with our heads leading to the same use case. All right, so we've again, which actor initiates the entering of the order? It's clear, uh, it initiates, it's again, we, we know what that means. It's basically the arrowhead is there. Which actor responds? Uh, there's only one response in this particular case and that's the account system. Is the account system an actor, a human? Well, the answer, most likely not. And who starts off getting the address? Well, it's, it's clear on that as well. Get the address, and that is that the account system may request as part of this operating system, this particular software, that the entry clerk enter the address of the customer. Can, can account systems cancel an order? Uh, create a new... Uh, Create a new case out of stock to cancel if you want to as well. So if you want to be really clear about it, I don't mind you creating another use case. 
during the order entry, does the account system send information to the order entry clerk? You can answer that. Who's passive actor? Well, this passive actor depends on the case. The passive actor where the, the entry clerk enters the order, the passive actor is the account system. But the, the, the account system can also be an active uh, actor when the, the system requests the address. All right, person acting, another quiz, the person acting is an order entry clerk may initiate an order entry and the cancellation of an order. The clerk is the primary actor in both of these use cases. The account system is triggered into action by an order entry to, to be involved in that process. It is the passive actor, but as I said, they can also be the active anchor. The arrow means that at some point, the account system will query the account system the, for customer account information, and at that point, they will become the primary actor. Account systems can also initiate the primary actor. As I said, each arrow relationship interaction still occurs in both directions. Now, this is just to tell you that just because there's an arrow here at one end, it just suggests that that's in this instance, that use case get address is initiated by the account system, but data flows both ways. You don't need arrows in both directions. The arrows indicate only that the party has started a bi-directional interaction or initiated. An arrow does not indicate a sole direction of data flow. All right, let's talk now about includes. Uh, yeah, I like includes and extend because that's where I'm really looking a lot at how students understand their software. Now, if you do have arrows with includes and extend, the general principle is you use a dotted line for both include and see how you've got this dotted line with an arrow here? It denotes an inclusion of a behavior described by the, in the use case. Think of it like a subprogram they always are called. So for example, the order entry clerk enters an order. Yeah automatically the system will will it's it will it'll always do this because actually if they try to enter a customer that already exists they they'll have to go through the customer record that uh, find the customer so this has to occur every time so if you enter an order automatically the system will go okay find customer same thing when the the clerk wants to manage the customer details it has to automatically, every single time, find the customer record, right? It always occurs. In the UCD below, both the manager details and the order uh, use case include find customer record. Include must happen every single time. Here's an example. If you subscribe, the customer subscribes to a review, then they have to choose a locality and they have to pay. These are things that will have to occur every single time. So they, they, they're subscribing to a particular service, they're gonna have to choose where they live, and they're gonna have to pay. The system will automatically get them to do those particular use cases or processes. It only places, extends on the other hand, is my favorite, is it's under certain condition, if statements. So an extend is a use case that extends another use case or we sometimes call it a base use case when circumstances require it. Okay, please make sure you add the dotted line for your extend just like your includes and include the text extend so that I know that it's an include or an extend. All right, so what's an extend? In some instances, you want to describe a variation on a behavior. It, used to it is used to describe different actions to be taken dependent on a certain condition. In other words, it can indicate conditional branches if act, uh, uh, in activities. Very good example here. The cook prepares the order. <clears throat> so let's say the cook, you know, the order has been entered and been prepared. Uh, and he has to, he's got a keyboard or some kind of touch screen in the, uh, in the kitchen and he add, the order's been prepared, he presses done. The automatically, let's say it's chicken parmesan. Whoa, love that. 
And uh, basically, at that point, the stock has now become low. Now, he doesn't know that, but the system does. So the cook enters the fact that he's prepared the chicken parmesan. And at that point, the, you know, there's only about 20 pieces of chicken parmesan ready. Well, they're definitely, sorry, available, but they're definitely low on stock at that point, aren't they? So that, that will happen is what the system will do is under that condition, if, for example, the statement says, if less than 20, then automatically a new process will be generated or another use case, and it'll trigger a restock order process. Try this one. Are transcripts always distributed in this system? <clears throat> Have a look at the, the transcripts. Find the transcripts. Are they always? Maybe, maybe not. Think about it. It all depends on whether they're extends or not. So if, for example, distribute information, distribute transcripts here, it's an extend. It doesn't happen. Uh, doesn't happen every time. Remember, just go back. Remember, an include happens every time, and an extend is conditional. Doesn't always happen. Something is triggered under certain conditions. All right, note how Ari had shown. I'm just going to repeat a little bit here that basically from the headed arrows, we know that the local bank office initiates the ATM maintenance because of the arrowhead. The customer initiates the use of the ATM because of the arrowhead. And the use of the ATM initiates interactions with the central computer because of the arrowheads. What does this tell us? In all fairness, guys, when I look at this, because there's no arrowheads, <clears throat> to me it indicates that data, obviously data flows always both ways, but there's no particular indication of who the, the active or passive actor is in the system. That means that both can check the status. So the salesperson and the customer can check the status of their order. The customer can check his status. I'm kind of repeating the customer can place an order and so on and so on. So in other words, they can all do it. What does this tell you? Well, it just tells us very clearly that you've got two include, three includes in one extent, okay? And the extend when you place an order, the request catalog becomes uh, an extend under certain conditions. For example, if the customer uh, places his order and said, oh yeah, can you please email me, tick, email me your and your catalog uh, and they'll receive it. <clears throat> catalog requests only, requests only sometimes accompanied by placing the order or under certain conditions. Supply customer data, ordering products and, and arranging payments are always part of the order placement process. So to create a UCD, here is a few steps, is basically identify your actors. Um, customers can contact salesperson to make a purchase. So you've got two actors there, but you're already kind of writing use cases at the same time. Sales, a person enters sales into a sales database. So customer can track their sales progress via the database. So what you're doing is you're, you're simply writing out sentences first as to what you, your app or your software will actually do. So here's your, your, your stick men, your actors, and you've got the boundaries of your system. Okay, and then after that, you simply identify your, your use cases, you contact, make a purchase, enter sales, keep track of sales progress, send invoices. These are all actors that do something, or interact with the system, in this case, a functionality of the system or use case. So there's your use cases. You've got your, your actors and your use cases. And finally, you have to add your association lines. Add arrows if an actor initiates the use case. We've talked about this now many times. 
and this action affects the salesperson. But in this instance here, we, you don't need to have a, another arrow coming back. If, for example, the, the salesperson makes a purchase, it doesn't really, it's not necessary because that's what norm, not normally occurs. But it's clear that was initiated by the customer and the salesperson responds based on the customer interacting with the system, which makes a purchase. However, the salesperson can initiate this. They can enter a sale as well. The invoice sending involves the customer receiving it. So we, we've got the, the accounts department generating an invoice, sending it out to the customer, and the customer responds. So here's another example. Note that the rearrangement to fit everything in. This is why using, uh, it is suggested you use a UCD software, quite frankly, uh, Word or Paint or any other program does well. You can actually do it by hand, by the way. So again, this repeats the steps, uh, list all the use cases, in other words, the actions, and some alternatives. If this fails, then go back to step one. And make sure you put your system's boundaries in and generalization. Now, this I want to say, look, it's, I'll read this to you. This means that one particular use case might have much in common with another more general use case. If so, to save repetition, it just gets really, really crowded. Describe the use case just once for general use. So try to include as much as you can, but don't overcrowd. So this is uh, just to show you that VCAA can test us and will test us on actors, use cases, association, includes, extend, and systems boundaries. You can have a look at that in the, the new study design. Have a bit of look at this in their free time ninja use case diagram. Will actors will go wild? Having said all that, um, thank you for listening. Particularly long video, but uh, took some time. Whoa, here we go. And uh, please uh, communicate with me if you have any questions about this.